Hello everybody, and welcome to the series I was talking about in my vlog, and I hope you guys are excited for it because I am incredibly excited for it. This is The Last Federation. If you are looking at this game right now and saying, Matt, this, what the hell is this game? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Go back a few videos or a day or two. There is a Judge Mathis on this game, um, and I am not going to go through the nitty gritty about how this game works because I did that in the video. I suggest going to check it out yourself. So, before we get started with The Last Federation, let it be known that Arkin Games is a pretty cool company. Um, they emailed me back pretty much immediately after I put up the video, and they said, we listened to everything you had to say, and we're going to try be implementing some of uh, some changes to, to directly address some of the issues you had. Um, I've also been following all their patches, and they have been patching the game every friggin' day, fixing and tweaking and changing things to the community's feedback, which is awesome. I am currently running beta version 1.005, the fifth patch they've released since the patching has started and there is a lot of things that are going to change from the last time I played it on camera. We'll encounter those changes as I see them and when we come across them I might comment on them if they're obvious. So without further ado, let's form a federation of planets. We're gonna go ahead and quit advance start and I think I'm gonna leave everything as it was before except we're playing on Iron Man mode because we're fucking badass and why wouldn't we? We're also going to skip tutorials, and we'll crash land on a random planet. My only hope it's not is it's not the Burlust, because I kind of talk about that in, uh, once we get there. Um, we're going to leave things on normal, because I've never finished the game successfully yet, and I'm hoping to do so here. Let's hit OK and play. Whoa! Are you sure you want to start a game with Iron Man toggled on? Just to make sure you understand, in Iron Man mode, the save game menu item is renamed Save and Quit, which immediately saves your, uh, your game to Iron Man 1 or Iron Man 2, which makes sense. Project Zomboid does that. The exit and load save game menus are removed. To quit, you must save. To save, you must quit. Your save is automatically updated anytime something really embarrassing happens to you. I am totally okay. I get what Iron Man mode is. So, I am the last of the Hydrals, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, we, we should go through the story here because we're actually playing it. So, I am the last of the murdered race, the Hydrals. My countrymen were dictators of the solar system, so we kind of had it coming. I was the sole survivor thanks to a renegade mission I undertook, betraying my race to bring spacefaring technology to our potential rivals. So I was a betrayer of my race. My ultimate goal? The creation of a peaceful united federation of planets. Only then can we be safe from the, kind atrocities my, the kinds of atrocities my race committed and the kinds that were committed against us. Naturally, upon my crash landing at this planet, I was, call, I was placed in captivity. Having no concept of my strength, they did not realize that I was merely waiting. I waited for years. My dream of a Universal Federation is as alive as ever. And now the Andors have finally gotten themselves into orbit. Okay, so we crash land on the Andor planet, which I think is this, the robotic race. Um, after spending so much time with me as a peaceful captive, they were ill-prepared for my escape. I have commandeered the first prototype suppressor, and now the Andors are in hot pursuit. Oh no! Ooh, I don't know what the Andors are. I don't think I've actually directly dealt with them before. Um, the Andors are about the best enemy to have all in all. They aren't above violence, but I don't think they uh, they have any desire to ever spread off their utopian homeworld. Their disapproval means I will find it difficult to get favors from them in the future, however. Okay, cool. So they're not... Just because they hate me, they won't be incredibly aggressive towards me. Good to know. Here they come. I outclassed this force so severely that it will be almost impossible to lose... So now is a good time to put my ship through its paces. But I still have to be careful. If they manage to take out my ship, I will be just as dead now as later. Alright, so we have two ways to win this first combat. We can destroy everybody, or we can dock. Now, we have a couple of options here. If we dock with them, we will immediately get a plus 60 relationship bonus with them. Which will help offset the minus 100 we got for commandeering their ship. Or, we could just destroy all the ships and stick with the minus 100, maybe getting another 1 or 2 minus to our penalty. So the reason I'm even contemplating docking with them is because, as we, are just, as we were just told, they are not a race that is really... <coughs> <coughs> Whoa. Pardon me. They are not a race that is really all that violent. So, when we dock with them, what they're going to do is they're going to get some of the technology back. It's going to give them an advantage in the long run, but 
it's going to help us work with them in the future. And with them being a more peaceful race, maybe giving them some technology now for, um, you know, maybe some better bartering deals in the future could be useful. On the other hand, they're not that violent. <laughs> so wrecking their shit and just leaving now also could be useful. But I don't know how useful the Andors are going to end up being in the future to deal with. I don't know how useful being on their side is going to be. In all honesty, we could end up just allying with a militaristic race and crushing them later on. I don't know what I want to do. Um, let's just start making our way over this way. And uh, maybe we should dock. So I think we're going to dock. I think we're going to try and dock. That's going to be my goal. I'm not even going to worry about it too much. We're just going to dock up and stay here and wait. Um, we will dock in four turns. Three turns. They're not going to be able to do much. They can't even do anything. They're like firing like little missile things at me. And we should be next turn. And we docked. All right. So I gave them the technology. F it. Let's see what happened. So we gained 60 influence with them. Um, so we are now only disliked, not detested. We're at minus 40. We can deal with that. Took nine turns. Not a big deal. You used special ability interceptor missile 30 times. You took out a total blah, blah, blah. Uh, error result, lost federation points. Okay. So this is something new. Um, this is part of the new beta, I think, which is why it says that. So there are now federation points in the game, which is basically going to tell me how likely certain, certain races are willing to join a federation at any given time, as far as I understand it. Um, we gained no credit by destroying no ships. Basically, we traded getting credit and running away by for giving them some technology so let's take a look at the system right now um so let's see these guys the burlust are here they're always here i swear to god that maybe this is the only way they can uh do anything um all right so now we have to think what do we want to do burlust always have this they want spacefaring technology if we bring the burlust to space they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. They're a very militaristic race. The only benefit to doing that would be that now we immediately have the burlesque in space, so maybe the extra technology that I gave um, the Andors, um, they can be kind of kept in check, at least hopefully. At the same time, GF06 wants uh, the Cushions, they want some terraforming specs. Um, hmm. Interesting. Plus 50% influence with them. I gotta, I gotta, the burlesque, it, it, it could be important to get the burlesque into space quickly. At the same time, you were also working on a ticking time bomb if we bring the burlesque in early. If we bring the burlesque in very early, they're gonna get militaristic, they're gonna get dangerous, and they're gonna become a problem unless I'm actively working to keep them on our side. That also brings up the question, how do I want to form the Federation of Planets? That's going to be something I'm going to be thinking about over the next few episodes. Do I want to maybe use the Burlust, this very militaristic race, and just maybe side with them early, get them as much technology as I can, and crush every other race in the solar system? Or do I want to do something a little bit different? Hmm. The Acutians are also useful, too. They're, um... One of the more dangerous races that they've always been acquisitions are, uh, are able to immediately have any citizens become soldiers. Uh, because, yeah, they're just robots. So if we go here... Let's bring them some terraforming specs. You know what? Let's ignore the burlesque for now. Let's not bring anybody to space quite yet. Um, we're gonna accept them. We're gonna get more influence of the Acutians this way. Uh, which is gonna be good. Um, the Acutians themselves are a pretty damn good race. In fact, before we take that quest, let's, uh... Can we... We can't, oh, we can't even talk to them quite yet. Yeah. Take a look. Nobody's spacefaring except for these guys. Planets, all one. So the Acutians... No one... I don't know what to do. I'm trying to think. Alright, let's, uh, let's bring the Acutians their terraforming specs. Let's just do it. So let's go ahead and accept it. You've reached the drop zone for my delivery. Where's the drop zone? Do 
Do I have cloaking on this ship? We do have a cloaking field. Uh, within range, all of your ships and any friendly or neutral ships that you are hold fire. Gain cloaking for three turns. These ships can still take damage. Okay. So we get three turns of cloaking, and if we have allied ships, they become cloaking as well. We need to get here. So let's go ahead and start our way up. We're going to crank our engines up a little bit, I think. Uh, we're going to bring our... We're not going to really worry about our weapons so much. Um, they're not really going to do, do much for us here. Alright, so here's where we're going to actually cloak. And we're going to use the momentum we gain to just kind of float in. I like how we're just shooting anyway. And then we should be no problem. We can just... Boom, done. Nice and easy. We jettison the, the technical documents. They're going to be able to terraform their planet. Basically, what ended up happening there, if you weren't aware, is that they were actually so incompatible with their planet that a mission event happened that said, look, we need your help. And it allowed us to get in favor with them. Um, since we refused a burlesque call for help, we get minus five influence. Not a big deal. A total of 40 hostile ships participated. Yeah, nothing happened. So we're favored with the Acutians now. We gained 80. We, they were at nine, minus 24. Now they love us. Built five of terraforming kit Acution on Burarian from technical specs you provided. Okay. So, we have, uh, let's see. We can get rid of these. We ignore a quest. So the question now is, um, who do we want to bring to space? Hmm. Well, we need to get credit. We have no credit right now. Credit is going to be a big focus for us, so we might actually just want to work with the Andors for a little while. Gaining credit. If we were to bring these guys space-faring technology right now. Uh, let's see. Credit is a super important concept. This is also blah, 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 blah. If we were to deliver them space-faring tech. Alright, they changed it. See? Okay. I like this. This is one of the complaints I had in the in the game. If I bring spacefaring tech to a race that's not another race, why do all the other races hate me suddenly? Now, instead, it, we are going to gain influence of the Burlust, which is great. We're going to get 5,000 credit. I'm not going to do this, by the way. Um, on top of it, we're getting Federation points now. Um, the only people are, that are going to hate us are the Andors only if we get caught this is a huge change in the last federation from like three or four days ago i like this a lot better everybody gets federation points if we're caught the andors who are the only other spacefaring people out there are gonna hate us for doing it that makes sense i like it all right let's not do this though all right let's uh, let's start working on some credit let's work with these guys for a bit uh, we can talk to the Andor Parliament. Let's take a look at what that would cost. The Andors are about the best enemy to have, all in all. They aren't about violence, blah, blah, blah. So, we have two options. We could do Peace Brokers Ruling Party. Let's take a read here. The current ruling party for the Andors is the Peace Brokers. You will not be able to do political deals with any other parties unless they hold the highest number of seats at the time of the election. Alright, so there are ab abstainers. Their primary focus is the Andors. Little else concerns them. Peace Brokers, their primary focus is preventing strife and war in the solar system. That's actually good to have them ruling right now. Environmentalists, their primary focus is helping the environment on all planets. Pluralists, their primary focus is helping everyone. Technologists, they want research and technology and pacifiers. Taming the aggressive races. Okay, that could be interesting at some point. For now, we're just Peace Brokers. They don't want fight, they don't want war, so having them not like me is good. Um, the next election will take place in the first uh, of Proto- 3003 in game time that means the next election is about 20 minutes there are six political parties in the parliament system each party has its own agenda and will only deal with related to its agenda the deals thankfully overlap between some between parties which makes sense each party has a representative chosen from the members of that party who are currently a part of the 400 member body members change parties with surprising frequency Periodically, there is an Andor election, which is usually a, a strange way of saying that a new ruling party is designated based on which party has the most members at the time. These robots may be nice, but there's something a bit wrong with their circuits. They will not accept bribes. So they're robots as well, but they're like not the, like the other ones. So let's see. We've got Peace Broker Ruling Party. What can we do? We can have them broker truce. Seriously. We need to take some lessons on how to influence people from these pacifiers to stop a war between two races and keep them resuming any war with one another for three years. 
Wow, they'll stop a war between two races? That's fucking good. That said, there is a cost, depending on how much the races hate one another, how they feel about the Andors, and your personal influence with the Andors, the credit cost of this may be so insanely high that nobody could ever afford it. Okay, so they could stop wars between planets depending on the influences each have. They could speak on my behalf, easy enough, when you're a proponent of a united, uh, unified federation, and they'll put in a good word for you with the race of your choosing, just have your credit ready. Alright, that's good. So there's all kinds of good shit they can do here. Send warship engineers. Okay, cool. How about general agenda? Can I do anything? No, I actually can't do anything with these guys right now. Huh. So there's no pirates or anything. Okay. Noted. Can I do anything here? Can't do anything here. This used to be my planet, by the way. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Um, who do I want to... See, that's the other thing. Who do I want to bring to power here? Whoever I bring into space next is going to have a massive advantage over everybody else. Who do I bring to space? I feel like we should actually bring the uh, Acutians to space. They're going to love us even more. We're going to have a massive bonus with them. And if we bring them to space, things are going to be good. Um, they're useful. They have no crime either. They like us a lot already. They're slightly more compatible with their planet because of us. And, oh, this is a time before they become spacefaring. So, these guys are going to be spacefaring in 7 seconds. They are the Thraxians. Um, the Thraxians are the hive mind. So, they're going to be they're going to be spacefaring very quickly. These guys are not going to be spacefaring forever. They're so far away from coming to space. The Burlus are pretty close, so right now I'm going to be jumping these guys to space way ahead of time. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, deliver Friendly intervention, deliver spacefaring tech. Uh, your race has long possessed the secret of spaceflight and is yours to bestow where you will. This race will eventually reach the stars on their own, but granting it to them early will make them very grateful. Not only will you gain a lot of influence from them, but the credit reward from them is a huge windfall. So we're going to get 5,000 credit from it. Let's go ahead and do it. So let's hopefully we don't get caught. So we gotta avoid these and just get to there. Wow, that's actually really goddamn easy. So the idea is to avoid the drop zone. I mean, to avoid the Alarmo bots or whatever. The reason we're avoiding them is so that the other people don't figure out that we're doing it, the Andors. As long as the Andors don't figure it out, we'll be fine. And there is, this is ridiculously easy, you're kidding me. Oh well, that's fine. Boom. We did it. Nobody found out because their spy drones are so poorly placed, it's ridiculous. The Acution capitalists are now spacefaring. Okay. Extreme caution is advised. These are the same beings that destroyed your homeworld. They did not destroy my homeworld in this game. Chick. Alright, so, I took five turns. We took a total of no damage. Nothing happened. It not even a big deal. We gained 50 influence of the Acution, so they idolize us now. We're at 112. Um, we gained 100 Federation points with them as well. Uh, let's see. And 10 Federation points with everybody else. And they are now spacefaring. Uh, that's good. So, I'm curious. Let's take a look at the Acution CEOs and see what we can do to deal with them. I've never really dealt with them before. Is Acution over the final blow to your race and the ruthless carries over to how they handle the politics? Uh, they're capitalists. I understand that much. So, let's take a look real quick. Uh, local industry quorum. The next industry quorum on this planet will take place on the 17th of 3005. After which some CEOs may be ousted from the business elite and thus different industry uh, ideals may be available. So that's about half an hour. Acutions don't really have politics so much as they do ascendant capitalists. Out of the 17 industries that the Acutions organize themselves into, they choose three that are the most powerful at the time and choose the top CEOs from those industries to represent their planet as business elite. Industry uh, quorums are held periodically and if the power of various industries has shifted, then leadership also will also shift. You can influence this by helping or hindering what Acution industry buildings are constructed or sabotaged. You can also bribe CEOs to get discounts on credit costs of deals in the industry. So, that's good. So what we could do, we could do a technical deal. Um, so we can help techn technical people. We help research branch and the communications branch. Let's take a look at what you, how you, so the technical convince other races to join the federation. Okay. 
convince other race. Look, you've already you're already in the Federation, right? We're all in this together. If the Feds, if we Feds don't get the job done, somebody else will. Base credit costs. So it looks like we can convince other people with money to join the Federation. Are these the same options every for everybody? Share tech with other race. Share tech with other race. So I think. Ah, okay, so they do have slightly different options. So communications, we can actually have eliminate tariff against planet. Um, look, local economy looking better, or is it that the attitude of the other race to this one are is looking worse? Either way, if you want to get them to cancel the tariff, here's what you pay them. So we can get them to cancel tariffs with other planets. Interesting. The other buddy else is sharing different techs, technology and science researches that we can have them share. So there, we're basically doing deals with different branches of their CEOs and different businesses. That's cool. Sorry, I'm learning some of the more ins and outs, especially since I'm going to be playing this a little bit more in depth. So you're coming along for the ride. All right. We, uh, we smuggled them spacefaring. Welcome to space. I'm going to stop here for the first one. Um, we will pick up here tomorrow. This is a very early test run of the series. I don't know if it's going to go well. I need to know if the interest is there. So if you guys are really enjoying it, let me know. Um, as of right now, I have this in my mind that this might not go past two or three episodes, depending on the interest. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys really love it, we'll continue playing. If you're not loving it so much, then uh, don't worry about it. But thank you guys so much for joining me. Consider dropping a like. It helps me out a great deal. And I will see all of you guys next time. Bye-bye.